Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Grouchy Anime Club. So for those of you that don't know, this is a show where every month we get together and kind of talk about an anime for your pleasure. This month we decided we were going to watch Monster and uh, I didn't really know much about this going into it, but I did like it. It was pretty good. Uh, so I'm your host, Tyler Kuchka. You know, I, I love anime. Grew up watching it. Uh, we have Alex from last month. You want to say hi to the fans there? How are you doing? Hey, how's everyone doing? I also like anime. Josh, how are you doing? Welcome back to the show. Hey, it's going well. How, how Had a good month? time watching this one. It's pretty good. Kind of crammed the uh, anime into the last few days, but yeah, um, it was good. It was it was actually pretty fun to just kind of sit down and binge it. So I I am very curious to see how everybody watched the show. Chase, how are you doing? Good. Welcome doing back good. to the show. How was your month? Oh, month is good. Um, got an extra day here, so that's cool. Most of my Februarys don't get to the 29th day of the month. Yeah, that that is a special day. And for the first time ever, we have a new member. Garrett, you want to say hi to the uh, fans there? Hi, fans. How How is your month off? I d- didn't have a month off. You didn't have a month off? The Italian Stallion didn't get a month off? Ne- never. Uh-uh. I only got one week off in the middle of it. But I was thankfully able to cram this entire 24 season in the last, like, five days. Perfect. That's awesome to hear. Um, is this the anime you were telling me about a while ago? Me? Yeah, you had mentioned... Oh, absolutely like a, not. This is not the one you were thinking about? Okay. I don't even know what I'm, you were thinking about now. Uh, so, yeah, it definitely wasn't this one. So. I don't think this anime was on anyone's radar. Yeah. It was, kind like, of I, I, it it was on mine. It was older that I watched kind of like the more like realistic kind of ones. The more like driven to these. Like even then I would still like, you know, Code Geass and stuff like that. Because you were telling me there was like some kind of like neurosurgeon anime. And I was curious if you knew this, but. Now that you've seen it, you had no idea what this was. You've never seen it. Yeah, this I may have been like vaguely aware of it just for my time on like forums and stuff like that. But other than that, no, I haven't never seen it. Okay, okay. So for anyone that wants to watch along with us, next month we're going to be watching, what is it, Alex? It's The Big Zero? The oh, Big man. O. The Big the O. The Big O. Classic. Hey, hey. So I've actually never seen the full series. It is a quick rundown. It is a show I first watched on Tsunami, and it's about this city where everyone loses their memory. No one, everyone just one day just like has awareness of where they are and kind of who they are, but don't remember anything other than that. And then there's this, the main character has to fight these bad guys in this giant robot suit. Hmm. And it's, I, it was pretty cool, the couple episodes I've watched as a kid. I'm kind of hoping, like, nostalgia will make me like it again. Um, but... 50-50. Yeah. I, I'm interested. It's kind of like a noir type of show, isn't it? Where they're a detective and they're trying to figure things out as, as the show goes on, right? Yeah, so it is, um, it is episodic, kind of. It's kind of like Cowboy Bebop, where everything's kind of, like, connected... But it's uh, more episodic than serialized, where each week he's trying to solve a different mystery to kind of like, and there's a different monster of the week kind of thing. Hmm. But there should be, if I remember correctly, an actual overarching like plot throughout the whole thing, I believe. I, looking at the like promo images, I was like kind of interested. So we'll see how this is. But this month, we're going to be talking about Monster. So before we start talking about that, I just want to mention this show is brought to you by Patreon. So if you want to go check out Patreon, you can look up GrouchyGus94. Support us there. We have some videos to watch that are totally exclusive. And uh, yeah, Gar- uh, Chase, do you want to give us a little bit of a rundown of the show? What is Monster about for people that aren't aware? Yep. Uh, so it's Monster, if you consider like... Uh animes like cowboy bebop or like big o which are good but not great um monster would be kind of the anime that you want to move to uh really officiados of the um of the um you know genre 
same monster as the one of I know you guys had never heard of it. I wasn't on your radar, but as soon as I came to the anime game, uh, it kind of found me. Um, and I knew immediately that this was a great addition. So yeah. We should definitely go through this. Okay. Okay. So, so what is it about? What, what yeah. is monster? What, what isn't it? What isn't it about? Um, so monster is a, a fantastic show that follows a, uh, uh, doctor in Germany. Now you might think that it would be a German doctor. No, it's a Japanese doctor, uh, born in Japan, moved to Germany. Uh, and he saves a kid. Um, you know, like you don't want to see kids get hurt, like deeply hurt, maybe like fall a little bit. You want to see that, but not like, you know, hurt in some other way. And so, uh, he saves a kid and this kid is, so so bad and it just is causing issues um and so basically follows this doctor trying to fix that mistake of saving that life um and it's a it's a good show critically acclaimed yeah say, actually. yes yes it is critically acclaimed do you um happen to know the director of this show by any chance um yeah so the director um no, why would I want to, you know, look into more? I, I, I was just so enveloped into the episode. Sure, yeah, uh, I, I yeah, totally get yeah. it. You know, you get drawn yeah. into something and it just totally sucks you mm-hmm. in. Interesting. Yep. Um, yeah, so let's see here. What did you guys think of the intro? Uh, Alex, why don't you go ahead? Uh, to me, there wasn't much of an intro. Like, you didn't even have to skip it. It kind of played... It kind of plays that music, and then the crowd shows up, and like it says "monster." Yeah. And like they always had like, I if I remember correctly, they had like a kind of a little bit of an opening, and they did a title intro, and it was really short. I think it was great. I thought it wasn't like it wasn't rememberable. It wasn't something I didn't skip it because it was so short, but it wasn't like it was kind of something kind of like I was like whatever. But I don't know. I didn't like it. What do you think, Josh? Anything stick out to you with the intro? I suppose you could throw the outro in there too if combine them. Any thoughts? Um. Yeah, I guess kind of the same thing. Like the intro to me wasn't super memorable. Um, it was short and sweet, which I did appreciate. Um, I would just kind of watch through it sometimes, but uh, sometimes that skip intro button would just pop up randomly. So. I mean, I really just hit that button. I think the problem with it is it kind of relies a little on symbolism that you kind of don't pick up to later episodes. And yeah. after the first one, I'm not going to watch that intro. I don't. It could be the best intro ever. It could be like MASH season two opener, and I'm still not going to watch it every time. Yeah, a part of it is like, I don't know why the older anime has kept the same intro. Maybe that's just a newer thing where they change it and they do some kind of like pop song and, and change the intro every few seasons. But I don't know, it... it definitely kind of got old but chase did you notice anything with the intro or the outro oh one of my least favorite thing is how the intro and outro are so long like you almost forget what you're watching like if you're like i just saw this intro like like literally five minutes ago and it you did because the outro just finished and it, it's so i preferred it it was it was literally quick enough where if you did skip intro you're saving like 20 seconds yeah like if that maybe 10 seconds it was say the quick yeah and i preferred it so because i saw more anime like actual show instead of the hey we're starting and be like all right move on boys the show's over so i don't know if you guys caught this but at the end where they had that picture of the creepy witch Yeah, it changes every couple episodes. Yeah, I didn't realize that like towards the end. And then I went back and I was like kind of skipping through all the different uh, episodes to see what was happening. But what's up with that? How is that? Do you guys have any theories on how that's connected to anything? It's just a random witch. It's not because it cycles through them. Because like some episodes will have certain pictures and then those pictures will show up again in later episodes. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It it's a little odd, and I don't. I I have a feeling that there's going to be something supernatural, and I I can't put my finger on it. But it's a little odd. It's a little odd. Um, Chase, what did you think about the series early on? Where did you think this was going to go? You said that you were looking for a show with kind of like a grounded protagonist. Is this what you yeah. wanted? Yeah. So I definitely 
this is kind of what I was looking for. Um, as someone that does not watch anime, um, from what I've seen in glimpses, I'm like, this is stupid. Like, this is just out over the top. And so I was looking for an anime that um, was more grounded, and it seemed like it was that it's more kind of soap opery a little bit at the beginning, you know, because if you're not dealing with someone that has super strength, like superpowers, it's going to be more grounded, more day to day life, you know, problems. I mean, I feel like he was super powered. He was like the best neurosurgeon at like 30. <laughs> I don't even think you finished school by that time. He was just done. Although I did like how they threw it in a little bit later that he wasn't like the best student either. But it was still like, I feel like. She- this dude is like the perfect guy in the beginning. The only thing is he's because he's too nice. He's too good at a moral code. Well, well, no, but you do say that. But like he was, he does have like super healing for like other people. Like because every time someone else gets hurt, he has no equipment with him. He's able to professionally patch them up. And everyone, all the doctors are like, if he didn't have this done, he would have been dead. Just the episode, like, like in the mm-hmm. small village, where the lady he just like goes in there, he's like puts his hand between her chin and her neck. He's like, "Yeah, it's ba- brain bleed. I know on this smells day, I can see it's gonna happen right now." And she falls on the chair. <laughs> I was like, "All right, okay, I must just be terrible." Jeez, I would never have picked that up. <laughs> oh my gosh! What did you think, Josh? What were your thoughts on the series early on? Um, I thought it was really good. I actually found it. Um, kind of connected with it quite a bit. I got pretty frustrated actually with the uh, doctor trying to do good, and then all of the medical researchers just being very corrupt all around him. Yeah, and then just him making the right cho- the the right choices, uh, ending up just like screwing him over again and again and again. Yeah, it. But- it is kind of odd. I so at the beginning, I was like when he entered the surgery, it's like after he got like yelled at because or by the family, it's like okay, he's gonna do the right thing and save the boy instead of the mayor. I was like, and of course the mayor is gonna die. Yeah, and like, you know, that was like super predictable and annoying, but also it was like such a little role because as soon as like uh, they do like the nine year time skip, um. Wherever, where he's like the chief medical officer, and then also he leaves. Nothing about that. What happened at the hospital doesn't seem to be important anymore. It's just following Hans. And I think what annoyed me the most, because I thought it would have been a really good show, was, and it might still be true at the end. I thought it was going to be that this doctor actually is like a psychopath. This doctor is killing people, has no remorse, and like split personality, something like Jacqueline Hyde. And like so, like at the hospital, he's just like this, this top of the line surgeon that's doing good and just feels guilty about everything. And then at night, he goes out and kills people. So that's what I thought it was gonna be. And then like they're gonna show like this Hans character isn't real. It's him that's like persona. And like so, like oh yeah, no, I saw the guy. And, and like, but then they didn't show that Hans is real. I was like, oh, that kind of ruins it for me. I was like, I was kind of hoping it'd be kind of like cat and mouse game because all the other characters are trying to hunt down this doctor and now I'm rooting for the doctor when I think it would have been much better if it would have been is the doctor a good guy or is he not because he keeps getting into all these weird situations that shouldn't happen yeah I I had the same thought when I was watching it early on I I kept thinking like I feel like he is doing this but then you see that Johan is the guy that's actually out killing people and like, that's fine, but I don't I mean, know. They kind of allude to that same thing a little bit later with, like, Johan and his possible split personality. And they're talking about, you know, the monster inside me is exploding and things like that, so you're trying to figure out. It also kind of raises the other question, like, if you do have two personalities, is technically both sides guilty? Because then it kind of plays into how do you view the person? Is it the personality or is it the actions done by the body? Right. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even thought of that. Hmm. Yeah, and and it's weird, too, because you see how they manipulated Johan as a child and turned him into this freakish monster, right? They they can have no help from the beginning, stuffed in their inner wolf or whatever. They did say that he was messed up before he got to the orphanage because him and his sister um, escaped from, like, 
uh, war torn like East Germany or whatever, <laughs> and they were That's all drunk. and they were already kind of me- he was already messed up before that because he said and- when we got to the thing and they started doing the experiments, he was thriving and they were trying to recreate what he was and they couldn't. Hmm. So. Because it makes you wonder, because didn't didn't Wolf say he found him on the side of the road, like, almost dead? Yeah, he was, like, starving to death. I wonder if, like, if he does have the personality, if that was, like, the breaking point, where, like, he had to develop a stronger one to survive, and that other one was the one that kind of took over with Wolf. I, yeah, that's that's a really good theory. I'd probably... Now, I just know it's crazy. We know that Johan has like split personality, right? So far in the story, we think he has split personalities. Do we think that the doctor is also somehow connected to all of this? He's like a proto experiment, or like, where is this going to go in the future? It's a solid question because I haven't been on the track it since. It just keeps like looping back around it's like a perpetual loop of like oh we kind of got him. oh wait no it was like this third party that we kind of knew about was actually related to all these things and it loops back to like everybody kind of being like having their strings pulled by one mastermind right it, that's the part that i don't really like that much because it's like how how much can this one guy do how could he be responsible for the entire story even though he was a child when it started that's the part like i know that they they mentioned that he manipulates money and was somehow able to like get the adults to do what he want but i don't know well that that's what they were saying though that one episode like they were because like he's supposed to be the second coming of hitler but this one's supposed to be intelligent um i think is what they said is because like he has he has super charisma he's able to tap into people's emotions and completely understand how they are and knows how to get them to do what he wants. And I think, wasn't there, like, that serial killer that he, like, he had so much control over that the guy killed himself at the mere sight of him? Yeah, I just... Well, to that point, if you actually think about it, most of the world's most, like, in our world's successful, I know it's a terrible term for it, psych murders that we have are actually very charismatic. Like, they have traits that are known to alert people, and there's, like, H.H. H. Holmes that did it. Uh, there's, what, Dahmer was supposed to be done really good. They're usually, like, attractive men that are able to kind of smooth their way into things. So it's, like, a pretty common thing to be in there, which is kind of weird if you really think about it. You know, we have to let our guard down somehow, so they have to find a way to worm their way into your heart. Yeah, it's it's just odd because we hear all of this stuff about him, but we don't see any of it. So far, he's been such a mi- like he's a major character, like he's driving the plot, but we never really see him. Only like these little glimpses, and then we hear about how he's like this prophetic uh, guy who can talk people into whatever and can manipulate whoever, and 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 is so intelligent. Um, what do you think, Chase? Yeah, um, it'll be interesting because right now, you know, we're essentially two uh, seasons in, um, you know, and we're still looking for him and trying to hunt him down. It always seems like he gets close and then just sneaks away. So is that the way it's going to be for the rest of the seasons? And then the finale is actually, you know, in like four or five seasons or (laughs) is there something else coming, you know, where like they catch him and then they, you know, it turns out maybe it's a plot, you know, there where he's actually the monster. Maybe that's when it comes in, but um, it'll. You, I really don't know if he's a protagonist through it all, or, um, or what what the no. case is with that. That's a really good point, though. Like Chase is like that was something when I got to like episode twenty four, where I was starting to get like, okay, there's seventy two episodes in this show. <laughs> How are they going to keep me? like locked in the rest of the way are they just gonna keep like oh he almost gets him and then doesn't for 70 more episodes or 50 more episodes so alex you went a little bit further right but not how far did you get past i think i stopped at 28 i only i didn't go too much further i kind of um I can't. I was going to rewatch the last. What was the, what happened on the last episode that you guys watched? Um, I think it was 24, right? 
Or did you guys go to 26? No, I went to 24. 24. Yeah, uh, that's a good what, question. What happened on the last episode? Josh, try, try to, you want to take it away here? <laughs> so I watched a little further ahead as well. I made it to episode 28. Um, let me let me pull it up here real quick. Yeah. Garrett, do you remember what happened on 24? Man, see, I'm seeing I binged all these. One second. I wrote notes. Let me get to them. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the one of men and dining. That's uh, where oh, his there's wife. Right down the they, like his wife went to go kill him with the uh, evil mobster guy, and then she ended up getting shot. His, yeah, the, the kid. fiance. Yeah, and then Dieter and him escape. Oh, yeah. Also, Dieter's such a weird character. Um, <laughs> you just travel around with a young German boy. That's still an issue. Um, young German orphan. Or Mind you, he's also native to Jap- Japan, so that's even it's. Did you get to the part where they meet the family? I know we all did. We get he meets the family, and they're a British family, and he's speaking German to them. I was like, this is messing with my brain because it's in sub. They're just speaking Japanese, so I'm like, you couldn't at least like changed it up. Yeah, so that German police officer who's like, that's another thing too. Everyone who meets this doctor, they eventually find out that he is this murderer that the country's looking for and none of them turns him in because he's like, well, he's such a nice guy. I couldn't turn him in. He's a, as far as you know, he's a convicted or he's like a wanted serial murderer. I don't like, care how nice someone is to me. I know a lot of times I, a kid like helps to sway them, but to me that's almost creepier. Like it's like yeah. you're walking around with clearly someone else's kid. Like it's a blonde hair maybe blue-eyed kid, and he is straight a native of Japan. So it's like, I, mm. So this, um, this kind of ties into something I wanted to ask you guys about. Did you notice any spiritual or religious undertones? Because to me, watching this, it, it hasn't really, like, been super obvious, like but I get opening. the feeling, I get the feeling it's like, Jesus and the Antichrist or something. Like, this, this, the doctor is like God on Earth, and everybody he encounters cannot help but like totally accept him and then johan is like the most evil dude on the planet there's got to be something with johan it it almost kind of feels like a yin and yang kind of symbolism here where like the darkness inside of tenma is the ultimate goodness and then you're gonna have the goodness inside the darkness that is johan like there's got to be something with that i bet there's like some plan for johan is probably trying to like fix the world or something because it kind of seems to double back and the people that were involved in the murders are dying so I wonder if there's going to be something along the lines where he's going to have to, like, cull his own influence that he's put in the world. Like, he's going to try to end himself or something. So, like, it makes me think, like, he's trying to, like, raise the world from where he was. Like, change how everything was. And he might just be going about it in a messed up way because, you know, he's a horribly abused child that grew up into a horribly abused world. What do you think, Josh? And got shot in the face. I feel like that part alone, you're bound to have some problems. <laughs> hey, there's no scarring. He's fine. I still, uh, there's like a story of where a guy took a railroad spike through the head and it changed him for like permanently. Like he made him unable to like handle emotions and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that guy became uh, something of a serious gambler, had a dr- developed a drinking problem, but just yeah, stuff he like had that. S- like really bad aggression issues too because he was supposed to be super nice and then he got super aggressive all the time that might also just be that he went through that and then he was like i'm not playing with anyone's i feel like a a railroad spike going through the brain is going to change you up it's going to change how you see some things yeah they talk about traumatic brain injury a (laughs) spike through the brain is it's pretty traumatic Mm -hmm. but um you know, I definitely felt some, like, religious theming. Um, nothing I could really place a finger on. But as far as, like, supernatural undertones, um, the way they portray Johan definitely has, like, a very big, like, boogeyman aesthetic where it's he's always behind the scenes. He's always there. But you can't tell where or how far away. And he's always off screen for the most part. So he's 
You can just feel him around, but you can't quite see him or feel like quite where he's at. But then also, <clears throat> um, what you guys were getting at before was that kind of this like ultimate good doctor making the right choices, and then you know all decisions have consequences. So this ultimate good kind of bond out this kind of unstoppable evil. It seems like it's very Batman and Joker. Kinda actually. Kinda is, yeah. And he has a Robin. Yeah. Or at least two Chase you <laughs> oh, can go with. Oh god, you had to bring up Robin. Chase, <laughs> what did you think? I didn't really get that. I just thought it was a good show. Critically acclaimed, some would say. Um <laughs> But I was just enjoying it. I wasn't really anal analyzing it as much. I was just kind of enjoying it. Well, like for me, early on, I, I just kept feeling like it was going to be something supernatural, like a ghost or something. The way that like uh, in the earlier episodes, I felt like there was wind or it, it, it would kind of uh, almost like an evil dead kind of camera pan where it was zooming in on things or zooming out and felt like they were being influenced or something was off. And then it just progressed and it's like no it's just this doctor and he's trying to save Hello? people and then, like you said he he creates this ultimate evil and uh yeah i mean I wouldn't mean, you I, like gray's anatomy more if there was more shooting I mean, a dude gets killed by a bus. Oh, sorry, yeah i was God. like a dude gets killed by a bus I you think see the after stabbed. aftermath of like that but if you actually saw the guy getting stabbed you're like well the guy getting stabbed <laughs> and it would be more exciting you know what did you think, uh, Alex? I, I don't think there's... I think that's something you're kind of reading into. I'm sorry. I don't... Much like the... Um, the like, I kind of hope that the doctor's actually Johan somehow. Like, he's just hallucinating the whole time. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that there's going to be some kind of magical... This is a very grounded thing. Um, uh, I, I do wonder, though... Is is a doctor actually going to shoot someone ever? He has a pistol. He did all that training. He kind of just shoots wild and stuff. Like he he carries it around and he threatens a lot of people with the pistol, but I don't think he ever shot anyone with it. Yeah, that would be something that would change the dynamic of the story quite a bit. If we see him turn, maybe that would be a way for them to like get some more juice out of the end of the story. If they they have him start to kill and and murder, but. Right now, he's so pure. I don't know that I really see him doing that. Oh, what, what about... All right, what is everyone's thought on that detective? I can't remember his name. But, uh, um, creepy hand Lungay? guy? Yeah, the... the Lungay, or whatever his name is? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He is so weird. I can't with that guy. It's like he had the, the killer, like verbally saying to him, I did the murders. And then he's just like, nope, this guy did it. I'm going to go get him. Also, was this right around World War II? Like, wasn't a this typewriter a thing, not like a full-on computer? Or am I getting the timelines wrong? Because, like... This is after the Cold War. Ah, okay. I got the timelines wrong then. I was going to say, like, because he's doing that, and you see him even make, like, the clicking noises. Like... I thought he was holding himself He's one of my favorite characters just because of how ridiculous he is. And, like, even when he's dying and, like, shot, he's like... Hey man, I just need to know that I was right. Confess that you you committed the murder so I could like die in peace. And the doctor's like, I didn't do it, dude. I didn't like <laughs> let me heal you, let me, let me uh, heal you with my magic powers. I'm not a murderer. He lets him just bleed out until he can just go over and save his life. He's like, all right, you're gonna, yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah, and. Like, the leap from, I get it, you could make that connection with the tie to him, but you would have to search, he literally would have to be looking. He has been trying to tie a murder to that doctor for so long, and he's like, I found it, a tie! That might not actually have been his tie. Like, he might literally have, like, that. someone else might have murdered him and have the same tie custom made from that thing, and he's like, look, it's him, he's got a matching tie, it's he was trying to find something to pin on this doctor forever. What, what did everyone I, else I, think? This one's kind of hard. Kind of partial to Nina. She's kind of running around getting stuff done. Like, 
I, I really like Kenzo's kind of cool, but to me, it almost kind of feels like obviously he's got like the I can heal anything with my hands and all that stuff. But then Nina's just kind of like there. She just goes and trains with you know an ex murder gets learns to shoot out guns and then just kind of just stumbling through life just kind of figuring out stuff about her messed up childhood and it's i don't know i kind of relate with her more than anybody it's more interesting because the dr moongay is kind of neat the only problem is he's just so cold and calculating like it's kind of like thing like you, you follow your passion completely like if you get overwhelmed by it yeah which that's a lot of characters in this show it they totally oh yeah obsession their... is a big theme what about you chase I actually kind of like the reporter uh, that died. Um, uh, mm-hmm. He was kind of cool. I was, uh, I enjoyed him. Um, um, he, you know, showed like just a tough exterior, but actually wanted to do the right thing. It was a good guy. And like just his promise too. He's like, if, uh, if we do this, I'll stop smoking type thing, you know? And, um, and uh, he did stop smoking for the rest of his life actually uh, after that statement. So that was great. He held up his word. Yeah. Well, was it also in order to get his ex-wife back too, though? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get the revenge body. That was just like. I was mean, just like, I got it. Like, I got it. Let's go. They did make well, a mention like that lady was in this. Like, you need to leave the office. You haven't taken a shower. Like, doesn't she say like you'll like uh, Tema only because you both haven't showered? You smell the same. <laughs> Wasn't that like something she says? <laughs> yep. It was a great. I enjoyed it, 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 the whole time he was on screen. Um, I thought it was a good character. Like right away, I didn't like him. Like I was like, this guy's kind of a dick. I was like, no, I like this guy. He's got a creamy inside, you know, just tough, tough exterior, creamy inside. I like the scene where he Tim was like, all right, you can have, you can smoke now. It's okay, you can smoke again. But he's dying. He's just. Uh, they're Sorry. so quick to kill these characters. Like they're good, but I, I don't like when they introduce a character and then kill them off in the same episode. I, I wish they would like <laughs> let him linger a little bit longer. Like, cause he was a really cool guy. I liked him. Yeah, it was great. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's game of Thrones of be like, Oh, you like this character? What? And just cutting the head off like right away and be like, I can't believe that um, Ned Stark is dead immediately yeah. but then it like throw holds bar but um they do kill people pretty quickly once you meet them they're pretty much dead right away what about you josh did you have anyone that uh sticked out to you um well I definitely liked anna as a character um i think in the episodes where she had gone missing essentially kind of felt like the show was missing something or maybe not missing something, but she is quite a dynamic character and just like, like you were saying, going around and getting things done um, and developing a lot as a character as a result. Um, but one of the characters I that does stick in my head was the small town doctor over that one episode. Yeah. Just um, kind of showing Tenma what could have been if he had followed that path and just kept working himself to death, basically. Um, But then also, kind of through that, everybody grew tremendously throughout that episode, and he offers Tenma a way out, a, a little exit off the path that he's walking. So speaking of obsession, then you see Tenma like, I, I can't do that. I have to carry on. And even, um, well, even ends up bringing Dieter with him. He's like, I truly don't think he could have left Dieter behind, but the fact that Dieter came with anyway is kind of, I don't know. It would have been a good jumping off point for, for the kid, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I feel like it, his path is so fraught with peril. This kid is, uh, I don't know, what what can they do with him? I mean, he... Hey, can you can you run 26.2 miles back to town and tell him that there's going to be <laughs> a fire? <laughs> like, <laughs> You're hey, a boy. jump out. Yeah, we're not going to slow down. Enough. We're not going to stop. We'll slow down, but just tuck and roll out this car and run back to town. 
convince the adults that they're. And then you're like, I'm sorry, I pulled a gun on you, but I can't have to get the hell out of this car. <laughs> For me, my favorite was uh, Eva. You know, I really liked her like at first she's manipulative she's only in it for the money and she's so quick to just throw tenma away when he betrays her father and i just liked how they kept going back to her and and every time you saw her it was like a different little interesting wrinkle to her character like you see her she's evil she's mean then you see her she like has all these failing marriages then she has um a problem with alcohol and then ultimately she kind of redeems herself so i just i thought that was good like i wish more of the characters were like that where they kind of strung them along and you you learn more about them as it went i do think it was kind of interesting that she did have a little bit of redemption arc at the very end yeah but like i thought it was kind of funny when she found out that she found what she thought was evidence that tenmo was guilty of murder like murdering her own father and she's like get back with me or i'm turning you in yeah and i was like holy shit that was your reaction <laughs> to finding out that yeah she's definitely uh weird i don't know um but th- i i liked her a lot like out of all of the characters like tenma was fine but i feel like he's almost too good it's hard for me to relate to somebody like that like he's perfect like in every way he's like perfect he does the right thing even when it's gonna hurt him he could stay at the village with that doctor but he's like no i know that this evil's out there i'm the only one that knows about him i have to try to stop him you know and, and it's gonna ruin his life and he's got a lot at stake but he's gonna do it anyways and it's just like it's a nice character but how do you relate to that you know yeah well and that choice too was very very batman of him like i have to stare into the pit I must go seek out this evil. What do you guys think of the setting? It's kind of weird. This is the first anime I've seen. It's in Germany. I didn't really know that they did things like this. I I suppose an anime could be anywhere, but it was definitely kind of odd. I like the lack of magic and technology, too. It's like there's hard limitations on the show where, like, like, I think that was something that they have, like, with movies nowadays, is, like, a lot of problems are solved when everyone has cell phones, like, because, like, in movies, they have to, like, find a way to, like, remove cell phones from people, because, like, oh, why didn't they just call for help? Why didn't they just do this? Why didn't they just do that? Because, like, all your phone is such a helpful tool. And so now you're in this past where um, you can kind of get away with being, like, this, like, well, I don't know. I still don't understand how, like, this Japanese guy walking around Japan or Germany isn't immediately spotted everywhere he goes. Uh, Other than that, it's kind of forgiven where it's just, like, people probably don't know about it, you know? Like, if, like, it's heard about, you know, some stuff. Um, But, like, just the limits it puts on people with this technology. Quick kid, run into town and tell everyone about this fire. You can't, like, do, like, a, a Facebook post or whatever. So, I, I, I really like the constraints it puts on on the show. What do you think, Chase? Um, yeah, it, um, I, I enjoyed the setting. Um, I thought, too, you also think it's interesting. You know, obviously, World War Two, two of the biggest components were the Japanese and the and Germans. Both thought they were the superior race so it would have been interesting if they would have won uh what the conversation would have been after um you know who's actually superior maybe just who can reach the cereal on the top shelf so japan would lose but um the setting i thought was great you know especially too if they you know going back to world war ii there would it's kind of connection i think alluding into that you know japan uh you know a japanese man from japan uh in Germany, um, which is a rarity, makes sense why it's kind of why Alex's point. Why wasn't he caught sooner? Because he looks nothing like he, like the blonde, blonde haired, blue eyed, like he is purely Japanese Asian. But no, I thought the setting was good. Um, it was a little bit different, not um, kind of a more you know forest, you know, filled small town, you know, hamlets. Uh, and I think I think it's a good setting for the story. 
What about you, Garrett? Any thoughts on the setting? You know, it it is to be said that it is kind of nice that you don't have to deal with like power scaling or anything. Everyone kind of stays on the same level, I guess, is pretty neat about it. Yeah, I can't say I necessarily dislike it all. It's kind of there for me. I'm more of just kind of watching the story kind of play out. I, I don't really pay too much attention to kind of what's going on because it does kind of throw me off a loop when we're sitting in... Because, like, I used to... I watched the du- English dub, which was on YouTube for, like, the first 17 episodes or whatnot, and they don't even attempt anything. Like, they don't try to throw anything in. Like, when you listen to the actual Japanese sub, they do throw in, like, Dankashin and Bitta, and they throw in stuff like that that actually speaks a language every once in a while, typically when Dieter speaks. But it just kind of breaks the thing when, like, you're in a different place. I know this is all, like, in Germany, but everybody's speaking Japanese and is translating. I would have rather it be in German and translated to English. Yeah. But uh, it's mostly just, like, a minor complaint It's really all it is. Uh-huh. I never really pay attention too much to the settings, to be in general, because I usually I like the sci-fi stuff where things are exploding and things like that. But it is nice to actually have to use my brain once in a while. <laughs> And, like, because there is a lot of foreshadowing, there's a lot of symbolism that kind of goes out through it. They like they like to ask a lot of really interesting questions when you watch the episodes and you go through things and you find different, expo- or different like, aspects of the character's developments come th- to true. Like, you know, can you really blame Johan if his entire life he was kind of bred to be a psychopath? And it's like, hey, never mind, he was a psychopath, but we just kind of homed him. And then it's the psychopath kind of talking, like, I don't know if this is really me because there's something else controlling my actions. Right. The stamp cat. <laughs> I like how she was trying to adjust your uh, your shot a little while ago. Yeah, she's like, nah, dude, you don't have a good angle. You should really just poke this on me, pal. What are you doing? You got to get out of here, buddy. What about you, Josh? Any thoughts to end this segment? Um, yeah, I think the... Um, I haven't seen too many uh, animes that we're set in kind of a Western Europe type setting. Uh, the closest thing I can think of is like Full Metal Alchemist, but that's in a fantasy world. But it is kind of German-ish. Very, yeah. Um, but the uh, time period, like Alex was saying, um, just those limitations in technology really served the plot, I think, to keep it as kind of this ongoing murder mystery kind of gritty like um hunting a murderer type of show uh it really served itself well i did though find some weird uh things that stuck out to me as far as the technology went i don't know if you guys remember seeing the phone in the car in the car console when all the other phones were wired there was one basically cell phone in the car hmm. um oh i didn't know yeah i didn't realize it either and i think then, it used uh, to be a thing where like there used to be phones in like a briefcase that people would bring into cars yeah so i don't know if this is just the start of that where it's like, oh, oh uh, this is the briefcase well, my, phone. i was saying my parents had a car phone when i was a kid yeah, that's really okay bad idea. yeah well, it's so many... the first step. You, Yeah, you can bring this phone with you. You just have to lug like a 50-pound kettlebell, and <laughs> it works. <laughs> Crazy technology. Now it's a small little, small little handheld thing. So maybe it was catching on then. Um, but something else, too, is I'm pretty sure they had fingerprinting right around this time period. Yeah. At least I would think so. Yeah, fingerprinting kind of. Funny. I don't know. It would have tied up the plot pretty quickly if they'd, they had included it. I think in certain parts, so, but um, some of the detective work is super sketchy. Like the whole scene where he's like, "Oh, this crime scene has too much emotion." I'm like, "Oh, it's yeah. full of crap." Okay, you're telling me you're gonna walk into a room and just pretend to imagine everything that's happening, and then I'm gonna stop right before the mirror, and then that's the key thing. And then a doctor's gonna come in and see the exact same thing. And oh yeah, emotion. It cannot be. It's gotta be. I don't know. And that was Lungay too, right? Yeah. He was kind of yeah. moving around the living room kind of like a weirdo. Yeah, he's the best, isn't he? He's everyone's favorite character. Yeah. Uh, 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 fingerprinting okay, was widely used like in 1903. So it's like 40 years before this, technically. Well, 80. Right? 
and they just take 19 oh, it's, this this show takes place in the 80s 40s 80s or the 80s. yeah but i don't know if forensic fingerprinting was a thing because i know for a while they didn't believe in it because it's like oh it's mumbo jumbo mm, that could explain it but um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know the difference between regular and forensic fingerprinting. So. Well, forensic printing is like using it, finding it on like the actual scene of the crime, and documenting them and taking notes of that. Well, 1894. It actually. So a little bit go. sooner than that. Lee says uh, www. Uh, Britannia. dot com. So at least in Britain. Hmm. What did you guys think of the animation quality? I thought it was a little, a little sketchy at some parts. It, the, everyone seems kind of stiff. It's definitely a dated way to do it. They obviously don't have the technology to do though. But I think it's like it got like a nice crispness to it that a lot of them, like the more com- co- complex ones, kind of lack. Like you don't always need crazy things. I mean, it's not as bad as like you know when three D animation started to become a thing and you had like those weird three D rendering images. Like, if you ever watched, like, the beginning of Blue Lock, there's some really weird, like, clippy parts where they throw that in there. That's what I'm kind of getting worried about as as we explore some of these anime. Because I know they have, like, CGI anime, and some of them look terrible. So going from yeah. Cowboy Bebop, which I thought was, the like, The Berserk one in particular. Then we go to this one, and it's like, ah, it's okay. It's not bad, but, like, some parts, it, everyone just looks a little stiff, a little rigid. The way they move, it's not super fluid. But it's some not realistic. Women, I was gonna say, some of the women look super weird. Like your uh, Eva, or her name was. Like she looked. I don't know. Look, she looked different from all the other women on the show too. But like, I don't know. That she paid for Botox. Maybe. Well, that and like she shows as she goes through it, she's struggling with like obviously d- depression and alcoholism, and then she just kind of kind of breaks down when she gets near the end there yeah i didn't notice that her face kind of softened and changed towards her like the last episode that we saw her in i'm wondering if like that was like to portray this like real shrewdness that she had about her but yeah i don't know it's interesting that or i wonder if it's like a change where she's maybe finally starting to like realize her own humanity because at that point she does kind of help out Dieter at that one point like in that part where she kind of chooses another life over making hers better because if you would have told me if that chick was going to murder a kid i'd 100 percent believe it at first i thought she burned down the family of her gardener like when i was watching it and that's exactly what i expected her to do i was like yeah this she's gonna light that house and fire and take out that whole family yeah but also, yeah, that gardener yeah. took his wife back pretty quick, even though she left to cheat on him. There was, like, no discussion. He didn't seem confused. He just took her right back. That, that scene was so hard to watch. Because I, I, at that point, you're kind of rooting for her. You're like, all right, yeah, you go be She's getting better. You know, she's, she's happy. She's going to move on. She'll be okay. And then that happens. And then you just she just lights everything on fire. And it's like, oh, shit. She is out for blood now. But, uh, yeah, she burns down the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you guys think the story is going to go in the future? Where do you see... I mean, we have quite a bit of episodes left. What could possibly happen? Josh? I bet there's going to be a lot of dying people. Um, It's a good question. I mean, I know we were kind of saying we were hoping that it wouldn't be this way, but I do think that it's going to be this cat and mouse game throughout the rest of the show oh for just sure. based on what i was seeing through episode 28 it seemed like um there was more posturing going on and um kind of johan started to find more resources in a way or something like that i wasn't quite sure where that was headed mm-hmm. but what do you think alex where do you think the story is going to go I think yeah, I think it's gonna be the doc the doctor's gonna get super close to catching him and then he's somehow gonna get away and it's gonna end with um just the Johan the doctor just swapping philosophy and stuff and just chatting and then it's gonna go black and we're gonna it's gonna leave it up to us to like what happened. Did the doctor shoot him or didn't he kind of thing. 
I don't think they're going to give us a solid answer at the end. It's going to be one of those shows. At some point, Johan's going to be a bigger character in the show, right? We're going to see more of him, or or do you think this is just like Jaws, where we don't see him at all through most of the show, and then at the very end, they deal with him? No, there are some Johan centered sh- episodes, but like right after like twenty four. Okay, so he he'll be more of a character going forward. What do you think, Garrett? Uh, back to kind of what I thought earlier. I think it's going to be a lot of the cat and mouse crap for a little while. I think we're probably going to have a lot of episodes centered on kind of Johan as he grow Johan as he grows up and kind of comes a term with himself. I feel like he's probably going to start. He's kind of already part of this giant like organization or whatever it feels like. I feel like he's going to start to leverage that power to kind of get to some ultimate goal, whether it be like to change the world and see he fits or to like rid him, rid the world of the Craig chaos he created, something like that. And then I think, like, as it goes on, I bet he's going to get caught. Like, there's no way they're going to, like, build up this Superman doctor and let him, like, get murdered. Unless it's going to go, you know, episode one of Attack on Titan and just straight murk the main character. But I think it's probably going to grow into this part where he's going to eventually find Johan Johan, and they're going to have, like, this kind of long discussion about how things go and then he's going to find a way to save the guy. He's going to beat him with the power of friendship or something like that. Yeah, and I suppose, too... There could be an element of this story where they catch him, and since he is so charismatic and is so, you know, 4D chess, he could maybe even continue to run things while being captive. Oh, like an El Chapo situation. Yeah. I mean, this guy has all the resources, he has all the brains. What's to stop him? You know, what what if he wants to be caught at some point? You you would think the story would be wrapping up and then they could continue on from there. What do you think, Chase? Um, another possibility. I think it's going to be cat and mouse, but maybe um, that uh, they uh, doctor catches Johan and uh, shoot kills him, and then it finds out it was a Fight Club situation, and he's actually causing these issues. And it's the um, sister that you know is trying has to you know the twin. Actually, he like made up the good experiences he had with her, and she's actually been trying to kill the doctor and take out the monster that killed her brother, or something like that, or um, way back, you know, at the start of the uh, anime. But it's Where probably getting that heavy head on her. I blame you for all yeah. this. The doctor's yeah. like, girl. <laughs> Yeah, but it's probably Cat and Mouse. At, at the very end, they just they totally twist it, and it turns out all three of them have uh, multi personality disorder, and and they're all just which. Totally... What are the odds? Um, that's that has to be a low percentage of the population. Um, I could Google it right now. Probably less than half percent, and uh, you know something like that, and be like, oh, we have three of them. Even if it's three <laughs> percent, that's still a crazy percentage of people that to have the chance to have three of them in the in close proximity. Yeah, and two of them are our brother and sister, and one of them is the doctor that did surgery on that on uh, her brother, and mm-hmm. yeah, it would be very uh, coincidental. But uh, yeah, that was our discussion on monster. Does anyone have anything else you would like to add before we say goodbye? Okay, all right. Thank you all for tuning in. Next month we will be watching the big O. And we're going to watch the whole thing. So episodes 1 through 26. If you like the show, make sure to support us over on patreon.com slash grouchygust94. Until next time, we will see you later. Goodbye.